Hey guys, welcome to your first section of uh, Chapter 11, our study of the First World War, or as also known as World War I. There are four causes to uh, World War I, and uh, let's just go ahead and get started on those. The first cause is nationalism, uh, the idea that your country is better than everything else. You put your country's interest ahead of everything else. And um, sometimes, oftentimes, in the case of World War I, that idea uh, flows over into other countries. Well, our country is bigger, our country is better, we speak uh, better languages, different languages. Uh, we are of a different skin color, so we're better than you. And that leads into the idea that they, uh, that, that country can take over other countries. It leads to rivalries among nations because obviously the other nation is thinking the same thing in this idea of nationalism. Um, if you have a case of two smaller countries who are duking it out uh, over this uh, situation, a larger country may uh, take on the role of big brother inside with one smaller country the old playground scenario well i'll get my uncle to be up your uncle type uh type situation um, and that's what we see in world war one uh, where we have austria hungary which is one country austria hungary uh, claiming to be superior over serbia and uh, attempting to take over serbia well germany uh, sided with austria hungary but the big brother in this case was russia russia saw themselves as the protector of serbia so when austria hungary uh, starts to make its move on Serbia. Rus Russia steps in and then Germany steps in because Russia stepped in and we'll get into that uh, later on in this uh, section. Uh, but then uh, one example of nationalism, the the spark, if you will, that ignited the fire, the flames of World War I was the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the Archduke of Austria-Hungary. He was on uh, a tour uh, claiming to be uh, watching war maneuvers of Austria-Hungary who were doing these maneuvers right up on the Serbian and uh, Austria-Hungarian border. So he was traveling through Sarajevo, which is a city in um, Serbia, and a member of the Black Hand group, which is a Serbian rebel group, threw a bomb into the car. Um, the car, the bomb didn't explode right away, and so the driver or one of the security guys threw the bomb out of the car. And instead of throwing it to the left or the right, threw it in front of the car. The car drives over the bomb. The bomb then does blow up, and uh, the Archduke is killed. His wife is injured. She later dies in the hospital. But um, that's, again, the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand is one example of nationalism. Uh, again, the Austrian-Hungarians thinking they're superior to the Serbians. Serbians not taking that very well. Another cause of World War I is imperialism, and we've studied imperialism for a very long time now. Uh, another word to describe imperialism is also, called, is also colonialism. The definition of imperialism, as you know, spreading your economic or political control over various peoples of the world. It's also known as colonialism because uh, in this race, uh, countries attempt to establish colonies. Germany and their industrialized efforts began to challenge France and uh, Great Britain and to the establishment of colonies around the world was also a huge competition. Um, again, when the United States was involved in this imperialist race, the United States was not out to establish colonies around the world. We were doing it for economic purposes. The third cause of World War I is militarism, the development of your armed forces and their use as a tool for diplomacy. Similar to the Roosevelt Corollary, here's what we're going to do, and if we don't do it, then we will knock you over the head until you do do it. Uh, but in the case of Europe, um, it was mobilization. Let's move our weapons up to the border. Let's show our strength first and talk second. Um, both sides, uh, both the, both the, the groups um, were doing this, were using this tactic, and it failed miserably. Um, as countries build up their empires through colonialism or imperialism, the empires become larger, more expensive to build and to defend. Um, along with that growing empire, nations need and want a stronger army to protect that. Now, in the case of Germany and England, they were both competing for sea power. England, obviously being a, an island, um, had an extensive navy, probably one of the largest in the world. Germany is rather landlocked, so in order to become a sea power, they had to take over countries near them to gain access to the water, which they did. Germany is led by the Kaiser, Kaiser Wilhelm uh, II, and um, that becomes his mission to, to make Germany uh, known for its sea power as well as its land forces. 
once uh, World War II begins, Germany has an, has a fairly extensive navy, uh, especially the the U-boats, the submarines, and they begin attacking merchant ships, any ship that they believe is carrying weapons or supplies, uh, aiding their enemies. In this case, England. So in the Atlantic Ocean and the Baltic Sea, we see a lot of German submarine attacks on merchant vessels. Some United States vessels were attacked early, early on in the war. Uh, Wilson sent a very angry letter to Kaiser Wilhelm asking him to stop, and the, and the fighting did stop, uh, the attacking did stop uh, of U.S. merchant ships. Uh, a few months, maybe a year goes by, and Germany then once again begins its unrestricted submarine warfare. That means they're not, they don't care who, who's the ship belongs to, who the merchant vessel belongs to, they're attacking it if they suspect it to be carrying weapons to their enemies. One major uh, event in the case of militarism is the uh, sinking of the Lusitania. Now this was a passenger ship, it was leaving the United States, it was heading for England. Um, Germans suspected it of carrying weapons, they attacked it. Now to the credit of the German uh, captain in charge of the submarines, he did allow, once the, once the vessel was hit, he did allow all uh, survivors to get off the Lusitania before they finished it off. And uh, I don't know if that's a credit or not, but that's what happened. Uh, the survivors were allowed to get off. They weren't out to just kill people randomly. They were, they were out to sink the vessel because the vessel was supposedly carrying weapons. Both England and the United States denied that claim. But I think later on with investigations of the, of the, of the wreckage, they did find weapons that were heading for England. And finally, your fourth cause of the war in Europe, World War One in Europe, is known as the alliance system, a system of secret alliances, uh, a formal agreement uh, between unions or between nations uh, is what a, an alliance is. Now, the big example of the alliance system or a secret alliance system is the Zimmerman telegram. We will do an activity in class where you get to decode a telegram uh, being sent uh, supposedly without your knowledge. The Zimmerman telegram is a an example of Germany attempting to get Mexico to get involved in World War I if the United States gets involved. The war was already going on in Europe when the tele telegram was sent. Germany sent the telegram to Mexico because they knew Mexico was still upset with the United States. Mexico was upset with the United States because President Wilson had stepped in during the various changes of leadership through Mexico. Wilson even went so far as to send General John J. Pershing into Mexico to hunt down Pancho Villa, who had killed several American workers. So Mexico doesn't have a good relationship with the United States at this time, around 1916, and Germany knows that. So they send a coded message to Mexico, basically stating, <clears throat> if the United States gets involved in the war, we would like you to become involved. And the purpose there is to force the United States to fight a battle on two fronts. And that's not a good idea. That's not a good war strategy. The uh, initiative for Mexico to, to join, uh, Germany promises that uh, if they win the war, that Mexico will regain all of their lost territory, not just Texas, but the entire southwest portion of the United States would be given back to Mexico. Uh, that's the big incentive. Um, the telegram is intercepted by British intelligence and given to the United States. Now there's another story on that, which I need someone to remind me to tell you in class, uh, but it is intercepted, it is given to the United States, and um, it's the kicker, it's the, it's the final straw, if you will, that uh, pushes the United States over the brink of war, uh, over the brink and into declaring war uh, against Germany. The two groups that form the secret alliances and, and in the war one group's called the Triple Entente. These are the allies, France, Britain, and Russia. And this is the group the United States joins. The other group is known as the Triple Alliance, and that's made up of Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. <clears throat> Both of these groups claim to be giving or, and providing international security or a balance of power in Europe. Um, not really the case. Uh, maybe on the side of the allies, maybe they're trying to balance back the, the power once Germany had started claiming too much uh, uh, during the war. Neutral countries, countries that did not take a side, you can see here Norway, Den Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Netherlands, 
Belgium, Spain, Portugal, and Greece. Okay, once the United States does declare war, April 1917, we immediately see opposition to that declaration. It comes from two different uh, groups, and again, these are people in the United States who oppose the United States going to war. The first group are pacifists. Pacifists simply oppose war uh, as morally wrong. Um, they don't pick a side just because of their religious views. Uh, they're not thinking that any one side is trying to gain an advantage uh, monetarily. They don't think the United States has gone to war for money. They just simply claim the United States should not go to war because it's morally wrong. The other group opposed to war are socialists. Now these guys actually think there's an agenda behind war. They claim that the United States is declaring war because the bankers of the United States want to declare war. And I want you to think here, if you watched any of the Sherlock Holmes movies, I want you to think about the arch nemesis to Sherlock Holmes, Professor Moriarty. And in, the, in those movies, Moriarty is stockpiling weapons and then going to sell them to the highest bidder. Well, socialists have this idea. Now, I'm not saying socialists thought up the idea of Moriarty. Socialists think that the United States bankers are trying to make a profit off of this war, and that's the only reason that President Wilson declared war, because he's influenced by the banks. Through this war, uh, we'll be talking about a lot of technology, especially in Section 2. Trench warfare will be mentioned in that section, though trench warfare is not a uh, technology per se. It's, it's a method or style of fighting, so I want to mention it here. Um, trench warfare becomes very influential and used ex excessively. Ex uh, extreme amounts of trenches were built uh, throughout World War I. It's not the first time trench warfare was ever used in history, but it's the first time it was used extensively. Um, even today, the trenches still exist across Europe. Now, one major battle is known as the Battle of the Somme, and it was England and France fighting against Germany, and they fought, uh, I think, I don't know how long the battle took place, several days, but on the first day, 58,000 men die. Um, and I think that still stands as the largest number of men, or num largest number of casualties in one day. Um, I'm not sure about that fact, but I think it still stands. 58,000 die in one day. They're fighting over seven miles of territory, and 58,000 men die for seven miles of land. And that's why the Battle of Somme is remembered. There's an area between the trenches, um, and uh, in class I'm going to show you, it take you on a virtual tour of trenches, but the area between the trenches is known as no man's land. So between the Allies trench and the uh, triple on, or the Central Powers trench, so between the Triple Alliance and the Triple Entente, that stretch of land is called no man's land. And it's called that because no man, if, if caught in that area, could survive. It was completely bombed out, full of craters and landmines and barbed wire. If you get stuck there, the, the chances of you coming out alive were slim to none. So as a review, uh, there are four causes to the war. Um, nationalism, militarism, the secret alliance system, and imperialism. Now, the United States got involved in the war for three main aspects. The sinking of the Lusitania, um, where some of the passengers on board were American. The Zimmerman telegram, where Germany attempts to get the United States, or excuse me, Germany attempts to get Mexico to join the war against the United States, should the United States declare war. And then finally, the unrestricted submarine warfare against U.S. merchant vessels after Germany had promised to stop targeting the ships. So those are the three reasons the United States declares war on Germany. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you in class.